Did you know in college dorm rooms there is a highly contagious infectious disease that can kill you in as little as a few hours? Yesterday I presented the case of an 18 year old girl who presented to the ER with just a few hours of confusion and high fevers. She had fevers up to 103 degrees and her roommates brought her in because she wasn't acting quite right. Upon arrival, she was confused and complained of a headache and nausea. I mentioned that when we examined her in the emergency room, she had a heart rate of 120, a fever to 103 degrees, and had this rash all over her body. She also had a positive Brzezinski sign as well as a Koenig sign. These are two common tests we use when we're concerned that someone has meningitis. Koenig sign is when you flex the knee to 90 degrees and then you extend the leg and that can induce pain. And Brzezinski sign is where you passively flex the neck when the patient's legs are straight and they will instinctively pull their legs up due to pain. These are both positive in meningitis because these two maneuvers will stretch the meninges, which are the covering of the brain and spine, and cause these reflexes. The meninges are the covering of the brain and the spine, and they can become infected just like any other part of our body. But when they become infected, it can become life-threatening. Here are the symptoms of meningitis, and our patient had almost all of these. Headaches, altered mental status, photophobia, meaning that the light bothers your eyes, neck pain or stiffness, extremely high fevers, and it can even cause this type of rash. It's important to remember that not all meningitis patients will develop a rash, but you can test for it by using what's called the glass test. If you press on the rash with a glass cup, it will not blanch, meaning it won't go away. A person with this type of rash is septic and they are extremely sick and need urgent attention. How do you get it? It's spread by personal contact with someone that has the bacteria, such as coughing or people that live together like dorm rooms. Some people even naturally have this bacteria in their nasopharynx. And we really don't know why some people get really sick from this bacteria and some people don't. But we do know that vaccination helps prevent contracting and spreading the bacteria. That's why you get this vaccine before you go to college. Okay, doctor, back to this patient because she's really sick right now. It is so important to recognize all of these symptoms because literally someone can die in just a few hours from this bacteria. If you even suspect it, you best start treating it immediately because that can save a life. Ideally, to make the diagnosis, we do a lumbar puncture to check the spinal fluid for signs of infection. If that looks concerning or clinically you have a suspicion, this patient needs a third generation cephalosporin antibiotic like Rocephin. This patient got a lumbar puncture and got immediate antibiotic treatment and she lived to tell the tale. If her roommates did not pick up on this and bring her to the hospital, she could have died. And like I said earlier, the mortality rate is 15 to 20%. And in survivors, one in five of them will have a permanent disability from their infection. That can be hearing loss, brain damage, kidney damage, or even limb amputations due to the sepsis. This particular patient had the diagnosis of bacterial meningitis with Neisseria meningitidis. It's a type of bacteria that can cause this meningitis. And remember, this is not just isolated to adolescents and teenagers. This disease can happen in small babies under one year old, all the way through any age on the spectrum. The best way to prevent meningitis is to get vaccinated, which will protect you from five different strains of bacteria that can cause meningitis. Here are the CDC's latest recommendations for the meningococcal vaccine. Our patient had an immediate diagnosis due to the astute nature of her roommates knowing that something was wrong and the emergency room provider who promptly gave her antibiotics and she survived without any deficits. Antibiotics should be administered to anybody that had close contact with that person within seven days of her symptom onset and that's typically given by a drug called rifampin another case of patient focused and compassionate care stay tuned next week and i'll go through another case